A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with a new video. I think I featured these guys in a past video. These are basically uh, little glow-in-the-dark light pipes for your flashlights so that when you turn them on, they diffuse the light pretty nicely and allow you to see kind of around you and the added benefit, they have different types of glow-in-the-dark film. And here we have kind of a speckled green. We have a diffuse green, which is pretty much the longest lasting by far and the brightest. And then we have this like really nice blue hue. And this one is actually kind of in the shape of a lightsaber and it fits on a pen light. So that's a really cool application. And I designed that in a previous video. However, today we'll be looking at this guy. And seeing how exactly I designed this and printed this out, and this guy is clearly Lego inspired, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are uh, in the light this time. Yeah, you can see the general design that I've had for these. I added like a hexagon shaped base so that it doesn't, well, most of them don't roll. The larger one doesn't very easily roll. It just sort of stays where you put it or you can hold it upright or use it like a torch, you know, upright like that. Uh, the smaller one, because of how small the um, the base is compared to kind of the weight of the flashlight, it does kind of tend to roll. It's a little bit, yeah, I would need to have more pronounced edges. But anyway, works just fine standing up like that. And I love this one. It's just sort of one of these, you know, traffic controller things. Like, okay, you guys can come, come along here. Oh, nope, stop, stop. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I love this one. It just and all these are just press fit just friction holding them in I just sized it so it's only a tiny bit I believe like 0.5 of a millimeter uh, thicker than the the flashlight stuff here you can see I actually painted some uh, uh, what is it strontium illuminate glow powder around the LED so it actually glows pretty brightly for pretty long anyway so yeah that was just a quick mod that I did before Anyway, uh, that's not really the topic of this video. Uh, basically, I love the idea of this, and I have a few of these Olight flashlights, and I've been giving these away as gifts. They're like 20 bucks, so they're not like super cheap, but they're not super expensive either. They make really good gifts. Uh, they are really good utilitarian flashlights, and best part is they are rechargeable and they have a micro USB port and a charging indicator so you can keep these charged up and they hold their power pretty well like this one I haven't charged in like half a year and it still works really well so anyway I love this form factor how small it is and battery lasts pretty long it has a uh, lithium battery inside anyway um, recently they were doing a giveaway where if you just paid shipping, they gave you a free one of these flashlights. And they do this from time to time. And so every time they do, I pick up a few. Uh, anyway, so I got this in the mail and I started thinking, I mean, this is great. It's a lot more portable, but I wanted something that gave me a little more diffusion. And I was actually looking at Lego minifigures randomly online. And that iconic shape of the minifigure's head, I thought that would actually make like a really good diffuse, uh, aesthetically pleasing kind of lamp. And so I designed this guy. And we'll take this down to the three components and I'll show you generally how I designed it. So we have the three parts here. Here I, on the cap, I designed little holes and I believe they're like one millimeter um, diameter or radius. I, I think it's two mil diameter. So I can fit uh, solid core wire, and this is actually wire I pulled from a transformer, like a pretty decently large transformer before, and I kept the wire, and it works perfectly as just a little handle. Anyway, all the designs, I actually designed the threading as a, like a helical uh, cut that the 
um, that I implemented inside SolidWorks. And then all I did was I uh, intersected the parts that I wanted to insert the threading on, and then I did a combined function where I subtracted the shape of this into the base as well as the top. And that's how I got the mating uh, you know, thread feature in there. Now, I couldn't do it one-to-one. -one. What I actually did was I designed this part first. This was the main part. I wanted to have fixed dimensions on this. And then I actually increased the dimensions on this by 1% when I did the mate. And so that way, there's a tiny bit, I calculated it, it'll be about 0.5 millimeters clearance. And for my printer, that gives like a fairly loose fit that's not too hard to screw in, but you can tighten down and it's not gonna come off on its own easily. So that's worked for me. And yeah, you can see here, I basically just took the dimensions from this cap that I, I designed because everything already works really well. And I planted it on top of this kind of Lego mini figurehead uh, design. And I was worried about diffusing because you can see here the light source is fairly small. And I was worried about it diffusing properly into this uh, much larger shape that's like maybe three times the diameter of the flashlight itself. And so what I did was inside there's a single layer because all these parts, by the way, are printed uh, in these orientations as shown and no supports are needed at all. And so in order to print a hole that's suspended without any material underneath it, uh, I used a trick that I found online where you print um, whatever the layer height is, you put a single, where an overhang would exist, you put a single uh, layer of that material so it'll bridge that entire material. And then normally the suggestion that I saw was then you just cut it away if you needed that feature hole uh, that's relatively floating in free air but I actually left it in there. And you can see there, there's just a single layer of the material and that's actually perfect to diffuse. And you can see it's actually pretty evenly lit uh, with the exception of the thread parts because they're, they're quite a bit thicker. I added quite a bit of meat so that um, when you're screwing it in, it wouldn't collapse or break or split the pieces. But yeah, you can see the, the light distribution is actually pretty good. You can see the layer lines, obviously. I printed this at 0.25 uh, millimeter layer height. And the reason why I did that is it would take like six hours otherwise to print. And so this cut it down to about a little over four hours, which is acceptable in my book. And you don't really need a uh, very fine layer height. It doesn't really add anything uh, to this print. So having kind of a coarse layer height is just a win-win in my book. And if you really were worried, I guess you could sand this. There's some imperfections, but actually that makes it look interesting to me. You can see kind of where the start-stop layers are. It's not perfect. It's sort of like a paper lantern kind of look or something going on there. So I really like that. And when it glows, you don't see the layer lines at all uh, just because of the way that this glow-in-the-dark material works. Anyway, uh, I added a pocket in the base here. So you could actually put magnets or a coin or something in there and you can actually use that to store things or to add a little weight to the base so you don't knock it over accidentally. Though it's pretty low down to the ground and it's pretty wide so I don't see anyone knocking this over accidentally. I added my logo inset and that worked out great as well. I've done that on a few projects. That came out awesome. And the threads are loose enough. So when I actually printed this part first, I wanted to make sure that this base would fit it because if I need to make any tweaks, I didn't want to waste the material on this. So for, for example, I, I believe this was about 50 grams of filament, which is kind of significant. I used two millimeter wall thickness. I might actually decrease that now that I know that this works so well. I might actually make it um, a little bit thinner, maybe, I don't know, one and a half millimeters, maybe go down to like one and a quarter just to save on material and maybe print time. Uh, but these two uh, took considerably less. So this guy took about a little over four hours, I said. Each of these took about two hours. And this is all printed at uh, 70 millimeters per second. But anyway, so I wanted to make sure that the thread would fit. So I didn't print out everything and try to screw it together and find out that I made an oopsie and my scaling factor was wrong. So I did the trick where 
in Cura, you can actually change the Z height of the print. And if it goes below, whatever goes below the print bed, it just ignores. So you can see here, I just lowered it so that it was at this level, only the very top was extended above the print bed. And then I sliced it. So this allowed me to print just the top part to see if the threads would fit. And as you can see, it fits awesomely. So I did a pretty good job there, that 0.5 millimeter uh, clearance all around works great. So yeah, once I was satisfied with that, I just printed out the rest of it. And you can even see the top. Now I might actually go back, the bottom fits flush to the bulb. There's a tiny bit extended above on the top side. It's, I, I must have not lowered when I did the combined function, I must have not lowered the cap quite enough. So there's a bit of a gap. It's slightly asymmetrical and it bothers me slightly. So I'm probably going to go back and fix that. But functionally, it doesn't. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't really matter that much. But yeah, anyway, um, other cool variations because it's, it's Halloween time right now as of the filming of this video. I was actually thinking of maybe... Um, insetting like a, a skeleton face or a pumpkin face and you can even get this glow-in-the-dark material in different colors uh, this is an amolen branded uh glow-in-the-dark filament and i have it in green and like i forget what they call it like sparkle green or starry green something like that it's the one that with all these speckles this guy here but anyway um it comes in green red and blue i believe i have the blue and the green uh, the red I, I've read is quite a bit less bright. So it, that might be interesting, though, to play around with this if I print this out in red and change the thickness of the layers so that uh, you, you sort of get um, an, an image inset into you know the light as it casts it. Um, I've seen a lot of different 3D prints that utilize that in order to make like backlit pictures. And that would be really cool to do with this. You can have... You can imagine like a skeleton face, like the Lego skeleton faces, or like a pumpkin, and maybe put a, uh, a gel filter in there to make it glow orange. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with this, and it's, it's pretty small. Uh, definitely, uh, my future plans maybe have one that's collapsible, so when, when it's squished down, it's only about like half the height, and when you, ex you can extend it, and it'll kind of be like one of those collapsing cups where it just friction holds it in place. I want to kind of do something like that, but already this um, worked pretty well for the first iteration. I'm really happy with it. There's only minor clearance issues, um, things to tweak. And as I said, no supports. So the bottom, the base was printed flat on the bed. Uh, the LED lamp part was printed flat like this. And the only thing that I had to print upside down was this cap because I set all the overhangs to 45 degrees. So if you print it in this orientation, there's no supports needed. Everything will print out as long as you don't print too fast. I set this to print at 70 millimeters per second and uh, no, over, or no support material was needed. There's not any like stringy on the underside. The only bit of stringy I found was on this LED uh, lantern part. The, the bottom side, I used a, um, a fillet. And it's a pretty sharp curve there. So I can kind of feel there's some imperfections on the bottom here. It doesn't really affect anything functionally. So uh, I think that's good enough. I don't have to tweak that to make the, uh, the incline steeper. So yeah. And another cool trick that I found. I, I measured everything pretty carefully and I set everything up perfectly so that you can charge it while the flashlight's inserted. Everything clears with the cable. So that was just sort of really nice uh, thing that I, I found with that. Anyway, uh, if you guys are interested, I will put up the files for this. I would like to see other people design different globes with like different patterns and really cool stuff like that you could definitely do. White filament will probably work just as well on this. Um, kind of that clear natural filament will work great. It'll look probably exactly like this. But my suggestion is to get the glow-in-the-dark filament. Uh, just be careful. It does tend to wear your nozzle a bit because it's, it's, it's more abrasive than regular like PLA or ABS. Uh, but just grab a new nozzle and um, just use that one nozzle for abrasive filaments. 
and you can print your own out and it'll glow really well actually for you know a few hours after you you uh, just set it there on the table power it off so anyway yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, design files I'll post down below I'll create a hackaday.io page this isn't really electronics related but I just thought it would be uh, a convenient place for you guys to get down that the uh, design files as well as the uh, STLs that you can directly print and like I said I would suggest um, slicing this globe part at 0.25 millimeter layer height the other two it doesn't really matter there's nothing critical in the design for those you can go down to 0.1 or just leave it at 0.25 and it'll print fine anywhere in between as well but yeah anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this video this is just something that i thought would be a neat very quick project and something kind of halloween related you could you know if you have a kid or something you could print one of these out and this could be their lamp you can make the handle a little larger obviously yeah, they can carry this around. It uh, works pretty well, actually, even on the low setting. It'll allow you to see what you're doing if your lights go out, the power goes out. This is definitely enough to, to you know, go about your, your business and whatnot. Or if you need more power, you just turn this up, and this is easily enough to light up a room um, when there's no other light sources inside. So I just found out something really neat, totally unintentional. So I noted that I made a logo on the bottom, right? Well, if I turn on the light, and I turn it even bright, my logo lights up. <laughs> that is entirely unintentional, but it looks so cool. Yeah, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.